I have been waiting to do this one for a while. This show is usually about evolving a franchise gone stale or totally MIA, but this time it's about going way back to a game's roots. Back when it was actually good. Paper Mario. What the hell happened? You were once the coolest kid on the question block. But now you're just a, a worthless piece of paper. Mario is known for joyful game design and playful presentation. RPGs are known for their strategic gameplay and narrative-based worlds. The fusion of these two metals felt like some kind of revelation, like what Disney and Square got going on. Legend of the Seven Stars laid the groundwork, and Paper Mario blazed the trail. The first two games were out fucking standing. I mean, Thousand Year Door arguably has the best story of any Mario game. No, 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 you know what? Not arguably, that is a fact, an objective fact. Fact. Super Paper Mario was halfway decent, but that's where things started to go wrong. Story and RPG elements are the two things that distinguish Paper Mario from its siblings. Now, if I was forced to exile one of those defining elements, I would choose the RPG stuff because I vastly prefer a great story to turn-based combat. So that's why I still enjoy Super Paper Mario, but only to an extent. It wasn't a true Paper Mario 3, more like a 2.5. The lack of an RPG system actually leaves me wanting, with the feeling that it's just a hollow platformer hindered by a short jump altitude, crushing gravity, and a poor depth of field in the flippy dimension. But that was nothing compared to what was to come. The corporate tampering of this series resulted in such a dark age that VH1 could make a behind the music piece about it. Boom. Roasted. There are already so many Paper Mario Resistance videos out there that I'm not sure what to talk about. What hasn't been said? The whole world crumbled around us at the sight of Sticker Star. And that doom was solidified at the reveal of Color Splash. I mean, you know you made an unpopular game when you Google the title and this is what comes up. And I knew this feeling already. We've all felt this feeling at some point. Whether we were playing Sonic 06, Resident Evil 4, Other M, Nuts and Bolts, Andromeda, or Home Co- <laughs> It's the feeling that something you love has changed and will never be the same again. Yeah, you can still revisit memories, but you'll never make new ones, because everything is over. Paper Mario is over. No action commands, no battle inventory, no rich characters, no partners, no exotic worlds, no seamless map, no peach subplot, no Bowser intermission, no compelling narrative, no ominous theme, no grand adventure that's surreal even by Mario standards, just levels. Toads, cheap item-based combat, and a blistering emphasis on paper. Paper mechanics, paper jokes, paper story. Mario story? Nope. Paper Mario. We've come full circle, but gone counterclockwise. So the question is, what went wrong? <laughs> Turn-based combat is not my thing, but some games like Pokemon do suck me in and make it fun. Paper Mario was one of them, because it did several things right. For one thing, no random encounters. The enemies appear in the game world and the battle begins when you make physical contact. You can even inflict or receive the first strike. The whole thing just pleasantly stinks of Earthbound. Then there's the battle system itself, which is one of the most engaging and involving of its kind. You make time-based action commands that add attack or defense points, with most moves and items containing their own little quick-time events. The stage made things interesting with falling props and a rowdy audience, the low numbers kept it digestible because you could easily work out how much damage you will inflict or sustain, then there's the badges which serve as both collectibles and integral battle mechanics, I mean the level progression, the rewardable stat points, the special moves, the hammer and boot upgrades, the star pieces, all the items and recipes you can make with them. So. What went wrong? Well, the turn-based combat and a few other things vanished in Super because certain executives thought it would be redundant to have two Mario RPGs running concurrently. So Mario and Luigi became the torchbearer. Then in Sticker Star, the RPG stuff returned, but it was totally stripped and watered down because most of the other things remained gone. 
No levels, no points, no specials, no action commands, just disposable stickers and paint. How does a sticker sound? Sounds like it's gonna get stick way up to us. Is this what we want? No! God! In Mario games, all Goombas look the same, all Koopas look the same, all races look the same. But not Paper Mario. The first two games took nearly all the races of the Mario universe and breathed so much more life into them. Archaeologist Koopa, Pirate Babom, Detective Penguin, Mobster Pianta. I mean, I love Boos even when they all look the same, but just look at this shit, man! Aristocrat Boo, Butler Boo, Purple Boo, Kitten Boo! <coughs> Even some of the most obscure enemies were brought back and given individual personifications. Every single NPC is a unique character with their own name, appearance, and personality. Even enemies have minor differences that affect combat. The dialogue was hilarious. And if you disagree or think it's for kids, then you must be reading it like a bad actor. Hmm, all right, I gotta live with uh, you being my old man. You gotta let go, man. Every time I play these games, I genuinely laugh out loud. Especially the second one. It's clear from the beginning that this game was written and made for the people who grew up playing SNES in 64 and were older at the time of the game's release. And a lot of them had some of the most clearly written accents. Hey! Up, hey, show you throw your dance. Photo went up. Murphy. Money. Billy. Some broad what got myself for the way places policy. There's just so many great characters that I wish they could all be party members, but that is a special status reserved for a select few. A lucky number seven of some of the most vibrant characters Mario meets on his paper crusade steadily accompany him. Maternal Cheap Cheap, College Goomba, Amazon Prime Paracoopa, Bandit Mauser. They could be upgraded for more HP and moves, and those moves weren't just designed for battle, but translated to the overworld for solving puzzles, finding secrets, and making progress. So, what went wrong? Well, in the third game, they all went back to being generic enemies, but there was still a huge cast of characters. These guys and those dudes, Pixels and the Canadians from South Park. <laughs> And these were all okay, and the writing remained humorous and relevant, but I think the art style was clearly a segue into the whole, hey look, paper. Don't you just love paper? And then it went off the rails. Generic enemies, zero unique races, and a frustrating emphasis on toads. Where are the turtles? Come on, guys, get out of here. Where are the turtles? And it's nothing against Toad. I like Toad, but that's all there is, and they're all the same. Look at the toads from the first two games. Boy Toad, Girl Toad, Guard Toad, Chef Toad, Secretary Toad, Sisterhood of the Traveling Toad, Toad of Arabia. But worst of all, the partner system was severed and replaced with a hand-holding Navi-style guy. Hey, listen! No, you listen! Is this what we want? No, God, please, no! You know what I could use a break from? The whole grass world, desert world, water world, ice world, Bowser, you get it. And that's another reason why Paper Mario was so special. Either those places were left out or completely reimagined to the point of non-recognition. Rogueport, Shiver City, Flipside, the fucking boggly woods. A whole world of bizarre locations totally foreign to the Mario formula, all wrapped up in a seamless map where the most division you'll get is a hub world. In terms of game design, the worlds were packed full of content collectibles, NPCs, so many side quests like the old Koopa's fetch quest or the trouble center, and there were so many main quest requisites to do before the so-called dungeon. Navigate the forest, complete the haunted mansion, scale the mountain, conquer the castle, escape to the windmill, fight the heart, and end the monster. Three days on a mystery train, activate the midway station, fight the thingies, comb the Illuminati neighborhood, and find the secret of the sanctum. There are Zelda quests that are shorter than that, and the whole chapter thing never derailed the story. All the side quests and collectibles and open-ended map allowed for freely backtracking which kept it from feeling linear. Now this is another area where Super didn't totally cut back on. 
That game had some very interesting backdrops and locales. But as cool as those settings were, it was foreborn by this game. Because you can call it Chapter 2-1 all you want, you're not fooling anyone, I know what I'm looking at, it's Level 2-1. And they weren't truly three-dimensional, they were 2D levels with a 3D perspective gimmick thingy, which got old pretty quick, and again, it was clearly a segue into the whole, mm, you remember the paper? Things about paper! And that brings me to the part where I say, so. What went wrong? Well, they stopped creating exotic worlds and started recycling Mario worlds. And they swapped the progression-based open world with a level-based overworld. Now I ask you, is this what we want? No! One of my favorite narrative devices in video games is to divulge bits and pieces of the final level throughout a game until you finally reach it and properly explore it at the end. It makes you feel nostalgic about a game before you even beat it. The first game took you to Peach's Castle, a place you thought you'd always have at your disposal, and then pulls it out from under you. After each chapter, you play as Peach and get to know the castle inside out before you finally arrive as Mario. The second game revisits this idea with Peach in the x Knots layer and throws in a hilarious new story about Bowser following Mario one step behind. And once again, Super came through and had you playing as Peach, Bowser, and Luigi until they would wind up in Flipside and join your party as substitutes for Mario with their own moves. In this game, Partner took on a whole new meaning as you got to play as all four. What a bad time to get rid of turn-based combat. So, what went wrong? Not only did they stop doing these entirely, but the characters they starred were demoted back to their most stereotypical roles. Peach went back to playing damsel in distress, and Bowser went back to being a voiceless villain. Tell me something. Is this what we want? No! All the points I made up to now funnel down to this one that umbrellas them all. Nintendo is notorious for emphasizing gameplay over narrative, so it comes as no surprise that their mascot stories have seldom made us grip our knees. That's why Paper Mario was so special, because it was Mario's story. It took everything playful and fun and colorful about Mario and translated it over into the story-driven, strategy-based style of role-playing games. The plots are so inventive and satisfying. Uh, the first one is pretty straightforward, save the Mushroom Kingdom by collecting the seven star-shaped thingies and tie it up with a Bowser showdown, but it was so much more fleshed out and detailed and idealized than the average mainline Mario. And then Thousand Year Door comes along and raises the bar so high that it's never reached again. The entire premise wasn't just different for a Mario game, but such a fresh idea altogether, and it kept things shrouded in mystery until the very end slowly dripping details while raising the stakes. And like I said before, Super still had a very interesting story that was neatly executed and things did not fuck up in this department until Sticker Star. There was so much story-driven content in these games. They used to be so exceptionally detailed. Goombario and Goombella had a different piece of dialogue for every single screen and every single NPC. And each NPC had a different piece of dialogue for each chapter. There was just so much quality writing in these games. And it wasn't just the plot that defined and shaped the story, it was also the tone and the theme. Paper Mario might seem on the surface like a family-friendly little Mario game, but it's not a casual platformer and it's not always family-friendly. If it is a kid's game, it was made for the kids that were kind of fucked up and went on to be goth kids in high school. It wasn't afraid to be dark, serious, and mature. Like the monster who cut out its own heart so he can be immortal and eat ghosts. A hibernating demon. River twigs, as in river sticks, as in river of the dead. Oh, and a penguin murder mystery? Am I the only one surprised that they even use the word murder in a Mario game? Murder. Repeatedly? Not mucked up. Remember when the guy in the spinning house told you about a dream he had that said to spin around a tree in the desert? And when you did, the toad next to you told you about a dream he had about a spinning house. What? What kind of crazy David Lynch shit was that? Laura and I had the same dream. And were the original paddled around in shallow water, the sequel dove headfirst into the deep end. Right at the beginning, when the cruise boat drops you off at Rogueport, the first thing the captain says to you is, 
All right, let me get this straight. You want me to drop you off in a crime-infested city so you can find a princess with a treasure map? <laughs> okay, buddy. And the first piece of dialogue you activate is a salty sailor bob with a do-rag who tells you to hit the save block, because the thing about life is that you never know when you're gonna die. And right when you thought Boggly Woods was gonna be the spooky horror-themed level, they send you to Twilight Town. And right when you thought it was gonna be disappointingly short, they steal your identity and send you chasing after it. A lost civilization, a doomsday prophecy, a fight club, class division of rich and poor. Dude, the central hub is a ghetto. I don't care about what's going on in the hood. In the ghetto. I don't care what the ESRB says, this game is dark as fuck. And don't even get me started on how dark Super is, because I can go on and on about all the little things, but the real proof is in the bigger picture. It's in the themes. The original had a very blatant motif of traveling and multiculturalism, then Thousand Year Door toyed around with the timeless theme of death, and Super even straddled the other big one. Love. So. What. Went. Wrong. Paper. 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 Pieces of paper. And that is a good day. I earned some banana bread. Well, the scenario department seems to have been disbanded and completely replaced with Dunder Mifflin. People versus paper people. Now, it's no secret that Nintendo likes to experiment with art styles, and it's no surprise that most of the time it comes out appealing to the eye. The paper aesthetic was chosen because Mario's story was told like a book or a play. It was always amusing and it was utilized to a degree, but more and more it became the centerpiece of the series. Stickers, paint, punk-ass paper puns, and yeah, there's still humor and okay writing, but there's no substance or context gluing it all together. Paper Mario basing its gameplay and narrative on the paper aesthetic would be like every game in the adult timeline of Zelda basing its gameplay and narrative on cell-shaded graphics. Can we please not talk about paper? There's gotta be something else that we can talk about. Not only is there a complete absence of characters and settings, but of plot and tone and theme. The entire series has just regressed to the Mario cliche of, eh, Bowser kidnapped the princess and you gotta save her because... Because, because! Here's some stickers, and some paint. Here's a nice watch for you, and some peanuts. Good people of the internet. Is this what we want? No! 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 Now, let's say they did return to form, and Paper Mario returned to its role-playing, story-driven goodness. How can they make that even better? Well, if you ever Google imaged Paper Mario partner ideas, then you know how many Mario characters would make cool-ass party members. I mean, if you ain't making a Paper Mario dream team, then pfft, you ain't living. And imagine handing a friend a Joy-Con and them taking control of the partner. And then there's the map. You know, you could say Paper Mario isn't a very graphically demanding game, and you wouldn't raise many eyebrows. It is possible to render the map as one whole piece, so, what's with these things? These little, uh, little Peggy bridge connector things. They can also think up another character to play as after each chapter, and bring back that party idea. And some greater difficulty would not hurt. Dude, what the fu- And if there's one thing we can thank Color Splash for, it's those gorgeous papery graphics. I know I spent this whole video talking shit about paper, but damn, it looks really good. Oh, and uh... Paper Mario Remake for 3DS, Thousand Year Door Remake for Switch. I don't have anything else to say except, please, please make a true Paper Mario 3. Please. Please, please, please. That's five pleases. In fact, you know what? Here's a whole bunch of other threes I want. So, is this what we want? <laughs> So, is there any hope left? A short but distant few years ago, I'd have said, Hell no! But now, I've said it before and I'll say it again, this is a different Nintendo. They've made savvy business decisions, they've shed their family-friendly persona, and most importantly, they are listening. They have been listening to us, the fans. 
It is evident in their products. We wanted a hybrid console, we got one. We wanted open world Zelda, we got it. We wanted a new 3D Mario, we got it. We wanted Smash, we got it. We wanted a home console grade Pokemon, we sorta got it. 2D Metroid, Metroid Prime 4, Animal Crossing, third parties, no more region locking, Mario nipples? I don't even know I wanted these, but we got them. These are all signs that point to hope for a new true Paper Mario 3. They are listening and they will listen to this. That soul-crushing like-to-dislike ratio. This is what we have to do. We must dislike every sticker star and color splash related video on the internet. Unfollow. We have to boycott a product if it's not what we want. We know you guys are superbly talented artists and making videos about what directions you should take with your own work is both arrogant and futile. But at the same time, if you want my paper, you gotta give me my paper! We have to make it known to them that we want the action commands, the battle inventory, the rich characters, the partners, the exotic worlds, the seamless map, the peach subplot, the Bowser intermission, the compelling narrative, the ominous theme, and the grand adventure that's surreal even by Mario standards. We don't want paper mechanics or paper jokes or paper stories. We don't want paper Mario. We want Mario story. We have to make this known. I want you to get up now. You gotta get up? I want all of you to get up out of your chairs. You gotta get up on the table? I want you to get up right now and go to the window, open it, and stick your head out and yell, I'm as mad as hell and I'm not gonna take this anymore! I want you to get up right now. I'm mad as hell! I'm not gonna take it anymore! I'm mad as hell! Stick your head out of the window, open it, then stick your head out and keep yelling and yell! I'm mad as hell and I'm not gonna take it anymore! I'm mad as hell and I'm not gonna take this anymore! What'd you think about Color Splash? I absolutely adore the Paper Mario series. Oh, you lost its sense of identity over the years. Dear Nintendo, I'm done. Paper Mario. What what went wrong? Paper. 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 Paper.